Hello everyone, this is Grace. It is September the 27th, 2021. And today we're going to be taking a look at the solar eclipse. Now I do have a couple of corrections that I want to do before we get into that. First, um... Okay, this verse was, I used this verse as an example of the black moon in the um, video about the moon. I don't think that this is best used to describe the black moon. It, this is going to be best, I'll read it to you. He answered, he answered and said unto them, when it is evening, you say it will be fair weather for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today for the sky is red and lowering. It doesn't really say anything about cold there. This is going to be best used for either the clouds or the rain. So I don't think it was properly used for um, the um, the black moon. So I wanted to correct that. Also, oh, I found an additional video. I found additional scripture. It did come to mind uh, about the stars. Now I didn't study the stars in that video, but since I did mention it, I did find this this scripture. And the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casted her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. So, all of this, I went back through and I checked. All of this happens, it happens after the, um, after the U.S. goes into captivity and it's destroyed. And, um, immediately after the the tribulation for the 11th hour church so right before the kingdom is restored um, America is restored and I found a couple of scriptures and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the Gentile until the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled and there shall be signs in the Sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity the seas and the waves roaring. So first we go into captivity and then afterwards we'll see these signs. And But if you look closer, now if you've seen the video on the prophecies in the Gospels, you'll know that Luke is during the ninth hour church, Matthew is during the eleventh hour church, and after the eleventh hour church, during the time of restoration, when the people of God are restored to their home, and now they're given a chance to take the word out to all of the other nations, which was their original calling. That is, that book is written to, um, the book of Mark is written to that church during that time. So here we have Matthew. This is to the 11th hour church. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So it tells you what's going on. Then it says immediately after the tribulation of those days. And if you compare it to Mark, Mark says, but in those days, so it's actually drawing attention to the fact that he's talking he's talking about the past but in those days after the tribulation the sun will be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken so and we know that the stars in heaven are shaken that's actually part of it <laughs> and we know that that happens right at the very end of the tribulation we've discussed that in our other lessons before So that brings us back to our current study. And I'll just read this scripture just to do a quick recap of that. Um, just to do a quick recap of what we discussed in the moon video. So you'll be familiar with what we're speaking of. So Isaiah 3.18. In that day the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls and their round tires like the moon. What we discovered is that there is a necklace around the moon and I have an illustration here so the necklace around the moon it's like this now these black circles I call them a black moon but however they are clear they're invisible they're made of um, helium solid helium in in one of its forms and the reason why I say it's made of helium is because I 
I learned through science <laughs> that one of the forms of helium has zero heat molecules in it, which means once it reaches that state of coldness, it can never be melted. It won't ever melt. So it ha would have zero effects um, when it is in front of the sun. It won't have any effect at all, as opposed to the moon. When the moon is in front of the sun, it turns into a red moon. The moon would be made of solid nitrogen in one of its forms. I'm not sure what, you know, one of the forms of nitrogen. I just say solid nitrogen. So it is affected. It's just a minimal effect, a very minimal effect. So, um, and it is going to cause the moon to turn red. So in the far north and in the far south, when the sun raises up, and it's behind the moon. It causes the, um, it causes this effect that charge that the heat causes this chemical effect and changes the moon into a red moon. This, however, is our regular moon, <laughs> and it just goes around. And as it travels around, you can see the you know the different phases that it goes through and that it makes. Now, for the solar eclipse, the solar eclipse is going to happen during a new moon phase when the moon is completely behind one of the black moons because if you because you cannot see the light of the moon when it is behind a black moon. The light just doesn't shine. It's like it's not there. And you, this you can't this is invisible, so you can't see it, but it's still blocking the moon. So it just looks like sky. <laughs> it just looks like a regular sky because of the way, um, you know, the air is surrounds it. It just looks like sky. So, um, however, during a solar eclipse, the even though the moon is hidden behind this black moon, you can still there's still going to be a chemical reaction that happens between the um, this black moon and the regular sun and the reason why is because um, it's because the hydrogen in between is going to be affected but it's only affected when it is right up against the sun it's dispersed out as this uh, black moon now this would normally be the moon when it's in here but I'm using this as the black moon uh, because it's white and it's clear and that's what you that's what you will see when you see an eclipse you'll see you'll see a yellow Sun get wider and wider and wider and wider and you won't be able to discern maybe if you have a good enough camera you won't be able to discern that there's a difference in the sun if you looked at look at it. All you'll be able to see is a white ball. All you'll be able to see is a yellow sun that looks a little bit white on one side. And it's clear and invisible on the other side. And the moon is behind it and the sun, so it's not affecting either. It's not affecting either one. And I have a better illustration than this. I just wanted to show you the process. So Let's move this out the way and let's look at our map. Okay, so this is a map of the eclipse, um, the journey of the eclipse here. <laughs> and this is what I was just showing you, how the, the black moon is what I'm calling it, it, moves in front of the sun gradually and the regular moon is behind both of these. And as it moves in front of the sun, the hydrogen is still burning behind this that's in the atmosphere because the two most abundant sub substances in space are hydrogen and helium. Those are the two most abundant substances. So it may be something else. I just picked hydrogen. So it's still being affected because these two are so close together. But... Um, but it, it's being dispersed. There's enough of a circulation and there's enough space between them to where it's being dis dispersed. So what you will see, and I'm going to put something. Well, I jumped to the end. Hold on. 
there we go. So what you will see is this. This is what's going on, but you'll see this. It'll just look like it, it will just look like um, there's a slight change in the color. And the rest of this, of course, is going to be invisible. It's still invisible. You can't see it. All it does, but it blocks out the light. For, it blocks out that neon light, the type of light that is um, given out by the moon. So you still can't see the light from the moon. It just It's just not there. It won't go through this substance. But the light from the sun does. It goes through. And it, it's going to have some type of glowing effect on it. Because it's um, it magnifies the light of the sun. You can tell that on the sunny days when it's super cold. And it's lower to the earth. But the sun is shining, shining super bright. It changes the light that's on that, on that sun. And as long as it's not directly in front of it. There seems to be enough circulation going on to where it doesn't affect the sun at all but in the moment it gets in front of it then it blacks it out for just a couple of seconds and then it goes on its way so and this is just it this is just the um the moon from different perspectives on this map they have from different locations, from different locations, which tells you that the sun and the moon have to be very close. If you can see, if you can see this here, see, this is just a couple of minutes away from one another. They're not. Hold on. This is this happens first, and then just a few minutes later, you see this in a different location. That's not something that you would be able to see if the sun, the sun and the moon were that far away. Just so you guys know, everyone sees the same sky at night. If you have night, you're going to see it from different perspectives, but everyone sees the same thing. Okay, you of course, you might not be able to see what they're seeing over here, but if you can see what they're seeing over here, then you're seeing the exact same thing. Okay, everyone sees the same sky at night. There's only one night, and there's only one night sky. Now, I could say the same thing for the daytime, but the only thing you really see in the daytime is the sun. But the stars are exactly the same for everyone. You either see it or you don't see it. That's the only difference. So, this is a different perspective. So, if they've got a different perspective, what, one, one state over? Then the sun and the moon have to be a little, way closer. I think they tell us that the sun is 64 million miles away. You can't see that far. You can't. You cannot see. I don't care how bright that sun is. You're not going to see it at 64 million miles away. You're just not. You're just not. That's, that's strange. That's strange to me that you could see something 64 million miles away. No. I, I don't believe it. So anyway... Again, this is this is what you'll see if you look through one of those lenses. It'll black out the um, the helium, the circle that's made by the helium, and the moon is hidden behind it. This is what you'll see if you were not wearing the glasses. And I'm not telling you to not wear the glasses. Okay, I don't believe anything they say, but I'm not telling you to. Don't risk yourself for it. Okay, but if you have a camera or something like that and you see it lined up, you're not going to see anything. You're just not. The only thing you're going to see is this, a little bit of discoloration with the yellow sun behind it. Same thing here. You'll, if you look through the glasses, it'll block out this portion, which is, and I have to do colors yet. I still have to do that. <laughs> we'll get around to it. So anyway, I um I have a lot of corrections to do on light, you guys. I, I really have a lot of corrections to do on that. But it'll block out this part for you if you wear the glasses. But if you have a camera or something and you look at it directly, or you look at it, if you have a camera or something where you can see it without the lens, without the glasses, then 
I'm sorry. I just don't believe anything they say. <laughs> just it's so hard for me to to go along with the code, but I have to for um, YouTube's sake because they all want to start, you know, doing crazy stuff. But anyway, so don't don't look at it without the glasses because that's what they advise you to do. But if you have a camera or something and can look at it, this is what you'll see. And then, of course, once the full solar eclipse has hit, then just for a couple of seconds, it will, the, the chemical reaction between the helium and the sun, it will darken that area. It doesn't have anywhere to go. It's just squished in between those two forces, and it does not circulate around enough in order to um, break free of darkening, of darkening the sun as well. So it's dark for just a couple of seconds or a minute or two and then it moves on and once it starts moving on everything goes back to normal and again if you can see it there's just a little sliver here there's just a little sliver of the Sun where it where it's moving enough to where as it moves along it's just it's still circulating everything um, it's causing enough circulation to where the Sun can now circulate around this object and the helium doesn't burn enough to to cause it to blacken out so that is my presentation for the eclipse I hope it was helpful to you and I will see you in the next video. Hold on, I, hold on a moment. I said helium, hydrogen. Hydrogen is what's burning behind the, um, hydrogen is what is burning between the sun and the black moon this helium doesn't burn at all it's not affected at all by the sun okay <laughs> i'll leave it at that i'll see you in the next video